Yet another adventure with HiddenIncaTours.com, and today we're visiting Ollante Tambo. So we flew from Lima to Cusco, then went into the Sacred Valley, and you'll be able to see Ollante Tambo if you join this tour of ours in June of 2019. We'll also be visiting Ollante Tambo on this tour in August of 2019. And as well, we'll be visiting Ollante Tambo on this tour in November of 2019. Now this is one of the largest Inca and pre-Inca megalithic sites in all of Peru. What you're looking at is just part of what Ollante Tambo is. It's absolutely immense and again shows a combination of megalithic work such as these blocks you're looking at here that are not in their original position and massive Inca terracing that you see there. So here you see broken remains from a megalithic structure that fell down from on top of the hill above in the center of the video and then they're simply put into place by the archaeologists. So the original position of the blocks is up on the top of that hill. And as we look at them it's a sense of scale and then you see these strange almost like as if this stone was a big chunk of butter and the surface was troweled. So that's very mysterious. And here as we walk past some megalithic blocks what you're looking at is the actual bedrock of the area. It's a kind of shale or slate. And then what we have are these giant blocks of rhyolite. And rhyolite is a type of granite, but it's not found exactly in this area. It's from the top of a mountain across the other side of the Sacred Valley of Peru. So here we're looking at a wall. It looks megalithic, but in fact it's Inca, reconstructed from the rhyolite blocks. And here we have a standard Inca period wall, again reconstructed from local stone and the rhyolite. So let's go and explore as much of Ollante Tambo as we can in this 13-minute video. Here we have an Inca fountain system. And again, the sheer scale and spectacle of what Ollante Tambo is. Clearly one of the most impressive of all of the ancient sites in Peru and Bolivia as well. So we're walking across this bridge. And again, all of this area is Ollante Tambo. It's more than 600 hectares in size. And then we come to this very curious fountain. And the Inca were amazing engineers. They built in a magic trick that uh, I'm going to show you right now. You see the water's flowing out. You run your finger across and it runs straight down. And then it runs back out. And then it sticks to the stone once again. That's called surface tension. So here, we're farther along inside Oyente Tambo. Again, the massive Inca terracing systems. These are three meters, or about 10 feet tall, per terrace. And this is a curious megalithic aspect that the Inca turned into a sundial. They simply use the protruding knobs to indicate specific days of the year, especially the solstices and the equinoxes. And then as we enter into more of the Inca complex, we're going to look up and you see these very strange ancient cutouts in the bedrock. Now, we have no idea where the stone is that was removed from there, but what kind of technology 
could do this kind of work. And now going up into more of the Inca period construction. Again, you see that the Inca period construction is relatively crude as compared to the megalithic works we're going to see. And here, uh, built into the walls, you see Inca period wall constructions and also strange indentations in the bedrock itself. So this is a contrast between the megalithic construction, which is the indentations, and these relatively crude uh, walls built by the Inca. About 10% or maybe 5% of the site is megalithic and the rest is all Inca, just like what we see at Machu Picchu. And here again, as we walk past an Inca period wall, you find this absolutely quite amazing construction in the background, totally destroyed, whether it was quarried by the Spanish or destroyed by some kind of cataclysm is presently unknown. Look at the size of that lintel on the right hand side and these staircases. These were reconstructed by the Inca from older megalithic blocks because this again is standard Inca construction and then contrast that with what you're looking at here in the center of the video and on the right hand side. And now we're climbing up. Oyente Tambo is very three-dimensional. And uh, once again, notice the relatively crude Inca stairway. The steps are not completely even in terms of height, so it's a bit of a chore to get up here. And finally, we're on the absolute upper level of the main aspect of the Oyente Tambo complex. Again, relatively crude Inca construction work, but a lot of work. And now we're rounding a corner with the town of Oyente Tambo to the left of us. And here we're looking down at the town and you see how high up we are. So in the background you can see more Inca construction on the side of that mountain in the background. And now we're entering the area where we're going to see some pretty profound megalithic work, as well, of course, as tons of Inca later construction. So here again, Inca construction. Oyente Tambo, like Machu Picchu, was a, a site found by the Inca, and so they built a massive complex around the megalithic aspect that they found. And here again, one of the large terraces built by the Inca. Not a complex feat engineering-wise, but lots and lots of work. And now compare the staircase built by the Inca to this wall. It's like night and day. Whoever was responsible for this, that you see here, had to have some level of high technology. And now again, staircase, compared to wall. And as we walk up the Inca staircase, we're going to get a very close look at the much older megalithic construction. Again, the stone is called rhyolite. It's very hard. And you see how tightly fitting these, uh, these joints are. They're quite absolutely incredible. And again, as we walk along, we see what's left of the megalithic construction. It appears that there was some kind of cataclysm in the distant past that damaged the structures. And then as we walk along, here again, we see Inca repair work. And yet again, the incredible tightness of the fit of the megalithic. You can't fit a human hair in these joints. Uh, they're three-dimensional joints too. It's like marshmallows being squished together. This is beyond our present level of technology. And on the right side, there used to be a wall just like there was on the left side. 
but it simply fell down due to a massive earthquake in the very distant past. And as we go through this gate, you see the Inca construction on the top. And there's another megalithic wall. And as we climb up more or less to the apex of what we're going to be looking at, you see these incredibly carved seats on the right hand side, which are likely megalithic in origin. And then the huge blocks of what they call the Temple of the Sun, but we have no idea what its original function was. The Inca turned it into a sun temple, but what its original function was remains a mystery. And this is very interesting because here we see an example of the ancient cutting technology of the megalithic people. It doesn't appear to be a laser or a saw. It might be a sonic vibration tool because it appears to be handheld. The line is not perfectly straight, but it's perfectly even in width. And now finally, we're going to look at what's left of the Sun Temple. Conventional archaeology says that the Inca were constructing it and then suddenly decided not to complete it, but it's more likely that it was damaged by an ancient cataclysmic event that knocked off these um, two sides of it. This uh, front wall you're looking at at the right is built into the mountain, so it wasn't impacted that much by the cataclysm. But again, notice the incredible tight-fitting construction technique used. And the quarry for this rhyolite stone is across the valley on the left, on the very top of the mountain. There actually is no trail that leads to the quarry. So that's what makes Oyante Tambo one of the most spectacular sites. It's much more complicated than simply an Inca construction. And here in the background, you can notice that they put some of the megalithic blocks back into place and then filled it with relative rubble. And here as well, you see the, this wall section is intact. This big piece was put back into place and um, stabilized by the Inca. And here, the right-hand wall, again, they were able to move some of the megalithic blocks back into relative position. They couldn't join them back together, and so they filled the in-between areas with relative rubble. Such is the complexity of Oyente Tambo. And in my final video in this series, we're going to visit this location as well as one or two others. This is called Morai, located between Cusco and the Sacred Valley of Peru. And this probably is an Inca construction. So if you come on our tours in June, you'll see both Oyente Tambo and Morai. And our August 2019 tour, you'll see Oyente Tambo and possibly Morai. And then in November 2019, you'll see Oyente Tambo and definitely Mariah.